The heat exchanger shells were assembled on the construction site at Calder from sections manufactured and stress relieved at works in Scotland. At the boiler works, sections of each shell were fabricated from Coal Tough 28 rolled steel plate. Holes were drilled in the rings for the external joints of the boiler tubes. Class 1 welding was required as well as a high standard of accuracy. Each of the 18 foot diameter rings weighed 13 and a half tons. So they were dispatched in sections by road to the site 150 miles away. The narrowest place on the road was an awkward corner in the town of Egremont. Getting the dome sections through with only a matter of inches to spare on each side was just one of the problems of transport and there were 16 of these domed ends for the eight heat exchangers. In August 1953, the foundations were dug for a great concrete raft to carry the eight-sided biological shield. With walls seven feet thick, lined with 1,500 tons of six-inch steel plate. To support the 2,000-ton weight of the pressure vessel, there were 10 steel legs, each weighing five tons. A crane 200 feet high lifted into position the sections of the pressure vessel. This middle section weighed 90 tons and cleared the top of the concrete by less than two feet. The grid to support the graphite core of the reactor was 36 feet in diameter and weighed 63 tons. The lifting of the upper ring and top dome completed the pressure vessel. Raising the heat exchangers was another heavy lifting job. Each was 80 feet high, 17 feet in diameter, and weighed 200 tons. Into the heat exchangers were lowered the water tubes, 50 miles of tubing to each heat exchanger. Inside the reactor building, tubes for loading the uranium fuel were fitted to the top dome of the pressure vessel. After the steel thermal shield had been placed in position, concrete eight feet thick was poured to complete the shielding over the top of the reactor. Despite the cramped conditions, 50 men did the job in four six-hour shifts. Far below, work started on the intricate task of creating the heart of the reactor, the furnace to draw heat from the new fuel of the atomic edge. Graphite bricks were loaded onto skips and passed down one of the gas ducts into the pressure vessel. utmost cleanliness was essential at this stage of the operation. Every man changed completely into a clean set of overalls each time he went on the job and wore felt gloves to prevent any trace of moisture being left by his bare hands.
put up layer by layer on the dire grid, 58,000 of these interlocking bricks and tiles were used. Each one individually marked, each one laid to a carefully detailed plan, and each one checked and checked again. For one brick incorrectly laid and not discovered in time could have caused the loss of months of continuous work by day and night. With the graphite laying completed, work started on the installation of the gas sampling equipment. Nearly 50 miles of stainless steel tubing were used in each reactor to convey gas from the channels in the graphite to the control building. On the top of the reactor, the machines for feeding in the uranium fuel elements and unloading them after use had been installed. The running in and final testing had taken place. The reactor was finished. Less than three years after the start of construction, the 16 million pound plant was handed over to the operational staff. The atom was at work. Calder Hall is a gas-cooled graphite moderated reactor. The pile is constructed of graphite and is cooled by carbon dioxide gas. The power station consists of three main parts. First, the turbine hall. This is the same as in any other conventional power station where electricity is generated by turbo alternators driven by steam. The steam to drive these turbines is produced in heat exchangers or boilers of which there are four to each reactor. The reactor, housed in this building, is the furnace in which the atomic fuel produces heat. 